Hi, it's Elizabeth from EG Designs and we're downstairs in my glass workshop to talk about glass today, talk about selecting glass, different kinds of glass, and I'll take you upstairs and show you some comparison of pieces of sort of different ways you can use glass, whether it's transparent or opaque, textured or not textured, and, and how it sort of changes the piece. And since... <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes. I mean, we all make a lot of mistakes. Um, I will show you one where it is, it holds pride of place in our house, but every time I look at it, I think I wish I had make a different glass choice right there. Um, so I'll show you that so you can sort of see and learn from some of the things that, that I learned from over the years. Um, so I'm going to jump right in and talk about uh, glass transparency and opacity. Sorry, I'm going to just adjust this a little bit. So we'll start with yellow glass just to, to show you how this works. This is clearly a transparent piece of yellow glass. There we go. You can see right through it. There's a little bit of subtle texture from the glass making process, but it's not textured. It's smooth on both sides and it's perfectly clear. And um, you will see this in a piece upstairs that I made. Second type of glass, second yellow piece, it's called um, opalescent glass. So what that means is it's not opaque and it's not transparent. And this type of glass allows light through, but it really diffuses that light and it glows, but it's not giving you sort of that direct sunlight that transparent glass gives you. So you'll see sort of as I move it up and down across the lamp light, you get this lovely glowing, but you also have lovely color when the light's not shining through it. I'm gonna hold it up closer. You'll see this is like a lovely variegated yellow from yellow to white, lovely wispy yellow glass. This last glass is, even though you can see my fingers through it, this piece of glass is showing a little bit through. It's a little bit opalescent, but but glass like this, for all intents and purposes, you can consider it to be opaque. Certainly the darker glasses like this will not show through much light, um, but you'll see it is lovely and vibrant, even though it's not, even when it's not up against the light. And so I have an example upstairs that I'll show you where I just use opaque glasses and it really maintains the color even when there's not light behind it. So I have some that's in my house that is mounted directly to the wall. So I'll show you that upstairs. The other thing to talk about briefly is texture. Glass comes in thousands of different textures. Um, and I just show you a few, but honestly, uh, you can get so much texture. This is just a frosted piece of glass. They sandblast the back. It gives you a slightly softer look being diffused through different looks. This is a highly textured piece of glass. It's very busy. It's not adding color to your piece, but it's as adding visual interest. And this special piece of glass I inherited from my dad. Um, they do still sell it. It is daisies so you can get leaves daisies a geometric pattern an abstract pattern and whether it's highly textured or a little bit textured really changes how the piece feels um, and I'll talk about that a little bit when I take you upstairs and show you some pieces I do want to show you and I'm going to try not to make this too bumpy I'm going to show you I've got these panels here in my workshop and oh I'll put it down where you can see too. They're poppies um, and they actually, my garden's on the other side of these windows, but you'll see the glass that surrounds the poppies, the stems and the yellow, it's all transparent. So it lets through a lot of light, but the leaves themselves of the poppy are the, it's opalescent glass that is this lovely mixture of orange and red. And the reason that I chose in this piece to combine opalescent and transparent glass was really so that in the morning when the light hits that window, those flowers glow um, because they're, dif they're diffusing the light, they're letting it through a little bit and they glow just this glorious color. Um, and then at the rest of the time, I'm still seeing that lovely color of red and orange. So I'm highlighting the, the poppy leaves because I chose different types of glass. And honestly, if you love poppies as much as I do, 
the leaves are what it's all about. So it, it's a great thing to highlight. Um, I'm going to take you upstairs now and show you some of my pieces and talk about how those different design choices sort of make that end piece either work really well. Um, and then I'll show you the one piece that works like 95% and then the 5% I just sort of try not to see. Okay, I'll see you upstairs. Okay, we made it upstairs. Um, and I'm going to show you, we're going to start by looking at three pieces that have the exact same pattern. And I'll talk a little bit about how I approached the color choices in each. I do want to point out right away that two of them, which are for sale on my website, are currently attached to my window with suction cups. Don't ever put a large piece for any length of time on a suction cup, it will fall. Um, for sun catchers, I do use uh, little suction cups, but I you need to take them off and put them back on uh, sort of periodically because they will fall. Um, so I'll try and give you a picture of how I how I hang these in my home as well. But first I wanna talk about color choices, glass choices, and sort of the difference between these three. So I wanna start by looking at this top one. So that one is a very tulip forward. It's 100% transparent. Sorry for this crazy cinematography. It is intended to focus your eye on the tulip and the bold colors that you see there. Uh, the outside is fairly simple, mostly clear bubble glass with similarly bubbled green glass. And the reason that I did that for this one is I really wanted to focus on that vibrant tulip. Um, so all the glass has the same sort of level of transparency, so the light comes through it and it's beautiful, but I focused all of the attention on the tulip itself. So this second piece is also translucent, but it's a far subtler tulip and a much bolder frame. So your eye sort of goes to that, that very arts and crafts frame. I've got different textures and bold colors in, in this frame. And then a very soft pink and purple tulip here in the middle. So this piece and the first piece I showed you feel very different, even though they're both clear glass. And there's some beautiful like textural clear glass in there as well that I love. Now this piece here, I have it hanging in the window. It looks beautiful in a window. It's a very bold tulip again. And then with blue on the outside, this piece is in almost completely opaque glass. It, you'll see some of it is opalescent. You can see some light coming through. One of the things I've learned throughout the years from my clients is that there are people who are interested Sorry, there's like that big ball of light behind me, who are interested in big pieces of glass, but they might not have an appropriate window uh, to hang it from. So one of the things I've been asked for and I sort of have talked to clients about through the years is about creating opaque pieces so that this piece here looks beautiful in a window, but it looks just as vibrant in uh, like on a wall, hanging on a wall. There's another example of that. I will, you just got a picture of my chin. Um, let me show you up here. This is, this is my home. Um, you'll see up there I had this interesting small space that sort of separated out the original house and an addition that was done prior to us purchasing it. So what I did up there was I designed specifically for that small space. And all, obviously, all of that glass is on the wall. So no light shines through it, but because of the opaque glass choices, the colors still really pop when you look at them. So it sort of goes from the tree and spring and then ends up in a pile of fall leaves. Um, all right, I'm going to pause for a second and move to a different part of the living room. Actually, I might not need to pause. I'm gonna turn. I just don't want to make anyone car sick. I'm going to head over to this window. I am going to pause while I walk over there, but we're going to look at this sun up close. Okay, I'm standing on my couch. 
So this piece means a lot to me. It's a replica I made of a piece that my father had made. I took it from his pattern and I actually used exactly the same colors and the same glass as he used, or virtually the same, as he used 30 years ago when he made his piece. So you'll actually see that yellow transparent glass, translucent glass that we looked at downstairs and all of the rest of the glass that is used in this piece is also translucent. And while it's not showing up super well on the camera, right now, this is a south facing window and there is a warm, lovely glow that comes through this piece sort of all day long. You might notice that one of the yellows on the interior of the sun is wispy. You've got the center of the sun with a lot of texture and some more general texture on that, that red part of the sun. So it's, it's visually interesting while sort of sticking with a, a simple and clear palette. And if I can show you, all of the pieces I have mounted in my house are, there are hooks right into the casement of the window itself. And then it is hung from wires, wires, chain, um, from the window frame itself. And that is the safest way you can hang your stained glass pieces. So now I'm gonna show you the last piece that we'll talk about and I will share some of my learnings because that was one that even though I love this piece, it is not how I intended it to be. So this is the last piece I'm going to show you sort of over here in the jungle of our house plants. It is a piece that I made for my husband, um, a picture that we took at the top of one of our favorite mountains. And so I designed it from a photo and there are certain times of the day where the light hits it just perfectly and sort of all of it glows the same. But I made a mistake <laughs> when I was designing this and picking which pieces I wanted to pick. And you might be able to see it right now. There are a few pieces which, when the sun's not directly behind it, look lovely. They have like some lines and some, some different colors that really look like the mountain hills, but they're not transparent, they're opalescent. So at certain times of the day, these pieces appear significantly darker than the rest of the piece and you can sort of see it start to happen now. Um, it's not all the time. I still love this piece. My husband loves it. Actually, the light just changed. You probably saw it. Um, but my choice of glass does inhibit the light at different times of the day. You may want that. So we talked about that with the poppies downstairs, but if you don't want it, every time you see it, you're going to sort of say, why did I do that? Um, so that is definitely something to keep in mind when you're mixing sort of the light diffusion of glass and there's sort of a range. Um, well, the light's changing a lot while I'm standing here. Um, it is something to keep in mind. I will say that the light blue wispy glass that I used for the sky in this piece is like the most perfect sky glass in the world. Um, but again, some things I would change if I was thinking about selecting my glass differently. And I did this sort of very early on in my uh, glass making career. So that's glass, that's sort of things you should think about as you pick glass. Um, and if you don't keep all the scraps of your glass, I would recommend finding someone else that does because um, a lot of people tend to reuse this glass and I'm one of them. Like I literally save every single piece as long as it's bigger than a sliver um, and find a use for it somewhere. So um, enjoy making projects, enjoy designing projects and just give some thought as to what you wanna highlight in your piece and how you wanna use your glass. All right, happy making.